Shocking article is misunderstood that its sarcastic tone was just the pilot's sense of humor. But there are still those who believe that his published opinions on icing, together with the icing conditions on the day of the accident, amount to a smoking gun. The article just smacked of arrogance, and uh, it was very negatively received throughout the flying community. When I read the article by the pilot about uh, uh, not requiring de-icing equipment, my initial reaction was anger. You know, I, uh, I felt that he shouldn't be flying people commercially on a charter flight uh, under, with an airplane that was not equipped with de-icing equipment in Alaska. Although the Johns article may explain why the plane crashed, there is still the question of where. Where is the wreckage? And how does it elude not only a record search, but three decades of exploration since? As we continue, journey into the lost worlds of Alaska, from mythology to topography. There's a lot of crevasses, a lot of glaciers out there that will suck up an aircraft and you won't find them. It'll be hundreds of years later, the glacier will spit them out. As a direct result of the 1972 tragedy, emergency locator transmitters became required equipment on every commercial aircraft throughout the world. History's Mysteries will be back here on the History Channel. In Alaska, a search and rescue operation is never officially closed until survivors or bodies are found. This policy mirrors a deep personal need for families seeking emotional closure. Many, many times when an individual is not found and we're not able to bring a loved one home, either alive or deceased, the families are sitting there waiting for that individual to knock on their door.